In this video, I'm gonna show you 10 Samsung Galaxy Tab features that simply don't exist on an iPad. And I'm gonna be demoing these with the brand new Samsung Galaxy Tab S10 FE, the fan edition. This one is a direct competitor to the Apple iPad Air, but it is 100 pounds cheaper on day one. And if you happen to be watching this on an iPad, when you see some of the things I'm about to show you, you might be like, that's impossible. Well, most of them are, on an iPad. And who knows, maybe these features might make you want to switch. So let me know if it does. And you know, I've been using Samsung Galaxy devices since 2012, when the Galaxy S3 came out. And I know a thing or two about these devices and that's the expertise that I'll be sharing with you in this video. And if you do have a Samsung Galaxy tab already, or if you're thinking about getting one, this video is gonna help you truly understand what it can do and help you master your Galaxy. So a tablet is a very useful device, but you'll find that your phone in a lot of cases might just be quicker and easier, especially when it's just Googling or checking your emails. And for that reason, the tablet might get left lying around from time to time, not doing much. So there's a good chance one of your family members might ask if they can use it. And if you're an iPad owner, you might respond in this way. Why shouldn't I keep it? My pressure. Because only one Apple ID is allowed per iPad. But with the Galaxy Tab, you can create up to eight users by going to settings, accounts and backups, and in users. Here you will have the option to create guest profiles. Now there is one little problem, and that is the device storage, as it's quite likely to get used up pretty quickly if eight different people are sharing the same tablet. And this brings me very nicely onto the second big iPad Air killer feature on the Galaxy Tab S10 FE. So consider this, the iPad Air is currently 100 pound more expensive than the Galaxy Tab S10 FE for the 128 gig model. But it gets worse. Let's say you wanted the 512 gig model of the iPad, that would cost you an additional 400 pounds on top of the original price, bringing the cost up to 900 quid. Now check this out, on the flip side, you could instantly save that 100 quid as I mentioned already, and instead of paying the extra 400 pound for the extra storage, you could just get one of these. And it doesn't necessarily have to be from Samsung, but this Samsung Pro Ultimate 512 gig micro SD card costs just 50 pounds. So if you got one of these, now you have 640 gig of memory and you saved 450 pounds if you went for this instead of buying an iPad Air. And if you really wanted to, you could buy a bunch of different memory cards and hot swap them whenever you felt like it. Number three. So the Apple Pencil is awesome, that's undeniable. But there's no surprise that it's also very expensive. That's why a win for this is the fact that Samsung do throw in an S Pen with the tablet as standard. And a little side note, this is a regular S Pen, it's not the Pro S Pen that you would need to pay more for. And the difference is this one doesn't have any Bluetooth built in, so there's no air commands with this one. But it does give you all of the features you would expect from a stylus. It's excellent for signing documents, sketching and taking notes. And while there are lots of apps on iOS which are really nice for the Apple Pencil, there is a native app here on the Galaxy Tab designed by Samsung themselves called pen up. They've been working on this for years. And if you're into coloring books, I don't think there's any better ones out there that you can download. There's a whole community on here sharing their own drawings and colorings. And there's a really great feature, which I think is just fantastic. You can upload an image from your photo library or just an image you've got from online. And then you can sketch your own version over the top and then just delete the background image and pass it off as your own work. <laughs> Did you ever hear the saying, good artist copy? But great artists steal, but don't steal people's stuff. That's not nice. Number four. Okay, this is a small thing, but it's a huge deal when it comes to tablets, in my personal opinion. Because a tablet's gonna be larger than your phone, in most cases, you might feel the urge to use it in landscape mode most of the time, which means you'll probably spend quite a lot of time setting up all your apps and widgets for landscape mode. And one day you will decide to use it in portrait mode and that's when you'll realize your apps and your widgets are all over the place and it just doesn't look good. But on the Galaxy Tab, you can in fact customize and position individually all of the apps and widgets for the horizontal layout and for the vertical layout. And they will stay like that until you decide to mix them up. I think it would be pretty cool if you could have custom layouts for each one and different apps and different widgets, but at this point, that's how it works. Number five. Okay, this is very different from iOS. On the right side of the screen, by default, you'll see Samsung's Edge panel. This can be heavily customized, and I did make an entire video about customization, so I won't go into all of that right now. I will link that video at the end. So at the top of this list, you should see Samsung's AI Select. This will level up your productivity game, 
improve your research skills and save you time. And you can even use it to create memes like this. I think this is the pose he uses whenever he sees a speed camera. And I have had my fair share of speeding tickets myself, so I am just joking. Anyway, when you activate this, you can draw around or tap anything that's on screen, and then it will offer you several options. If the selected area is big enough, you can turn anything that's on the screen into a wallpaper. And if you do want to use this method, there is a very powerful and unique wallpaper image trick that I need to show you and we'll come back to that. Now check this out. If you select something that has text in it, you can extract that text just by hitting the T icon here. And this works even if the image is flat and the text is not selectable. And if there are dates and locations in the text, you might even see the option to add them to your calendar or open the directions to the place via maps. And if it happens to be another language, you might even see the option to translate to another language. But there's actually a better way to do that, so I'll show you that in a minute. And something else you can do here is select an area, then hit the crop icon with the pen, and then it will allow you to jot notes onto it, and then you can save that or send it to someone if you want. But I do think this might be the most handy tool for multitasking. Let's say there's some valuable information that you need to keep top of mind for that day, or let's say a recipe or something that you wanna make. If you use the AI select tool, you can grab a part of the screen and then hit the pin icon to pin it on top of everything that's going on on your tablet, and you can minimize it and maximize it later. It's kind of like a digital sticky note. And I think you'll agree, this feature is pretty nice. Nice. And of course you can share and download the AI selected area too, whenever you feel like it. Number six. So this is not unique to Galaxy devices. It is an Android feature, but it is also impossible to do on an iPad. Oh, it's not true. And you already know, Google is the number one search engine on the planet. Well, this new circle to search feature is their newest power tool. To use it, you just hold your finger down on the home button, the whole screen lights up, then you can circle around anything you want to search. And this is the tool that you can use to translate as well. This one's a bit better than the AI select in my opinion. So if you are on a foreign website, you can just use circle to search, highlight everything and then go to translate. Okay, so you've made it halfway through the video and thank you for making it this far. Here are a couple of bonus tips for you. And these are bonus tips because there are versions of this on the iPad, but I do think they're worth highlighting. So when you're using Samsung's web browser, near the top you'll see the AI sparkles. If you tap this, you can have that entire web page read out loud for you. So you don't have to read it yourself. And you can even lock the screen and the audio will continue to play in the background. So you could play it through headphones or something like that if you really wanted. And here's another little trick. If you go into the internet settings within the Samsung browser and go to the useful features section, here you can enable background play. So with this on, now you can actually play videos from the browser, let's say on YouTube, and the audio will continue even if the screen is locked. It's fantastic if you don't have a YouTube premium account. Here's another bonus tip, which again exists on the iPad, but was actually available on Galaxy a long, long time ago. And because of that, it's probably more polished here. So if you open up the voice recorder app, you can use the speech to text feature. So you can use this at 10 minutes at a time. Let's say you're in a lecture or something like that. You can record 10 minutes of that and have it all converted into text. If you want to, you can download different language packs and even have it translated from that language into your language and then pass it offers your own homework. Job done. Number seven. Okay, so now let's move on to another iPad killer feature for the Galaxy Tab. And this is something that Samsung have worked on for a long time. It is their split screening feature. So iOS does have the stage manager, it's pretty good, but I do believe this works a little bit better. To split the screens, you just open up the backgrounding, tap the app you want to split screen with, and then you could choose the second app that you want to split screen with. If you want to add a third window, you can drag an app from the edge panel. And then once you've done this, you can resize the windows and rotate them however you want. And this is fantastic, but it really is the ability to save these split screen setups to the taskbar, to the home screen, or to the edge panel that makes the difference. Because you can't do that on iPad. And if you're gonna be doing this a lot, the fact that you can save these will save you a lot of time. And here's a little bonus tip for split screening, which is exclusive to Samsung. And this one actually combines a few of the different tips that I've shown you so far in this video. So this involves Samsung's Notes app as one of the split screens and Samsung's internet browser as another. With these two windows open, you can copy text from websites and add it straight into your notes. And the URL links will also be copied over for reference. And if you want to, you can copy entire pages paste them into your notes in one tap. And if you add your voice recordings into another window, you can bring over some of those bullet points that you created 
and add it into your work. And check this out. If you use the AI select tool that I showed you earlier, you can even grab frames out of videos on YouTube, for example, and add those into your own work just for added effect, of course. Number eight. Okay, so this is one of the areas where Samsung is so far ahead of Apple, and it is, of course, AI in general. But with that said, the S10 FE doesn't have all of the Galaxy AI features that the Ultra model does, but it does have some, including their class-leading object eraser. It's actually so good now, and I'm really happy to see it here on the Galaxy Tab S10 FE. So this is something that I think a lot of people will find valuable when it comes to editing photos. Now on that topic, remember how I showed you how to grab an image from anywhere using AI select and how you can even set it as a wallpaper? Well, this is that wallpaper trick that I mentioned. Let's say for example, you've grabbed a photo or an image that's particularly grainy and low res. If you open it in Samsung's gallery and hit the little AI sparkle tool, you'll see a tool here called Remaster. This will upscale that grainy image and make it look nicer and cleaner so that if you do decide to use it as a wallpaper, it won't look crap. And this same tool can be used for upscaling old photos that you might have that you've scanned into a computer or something. So this could be very useful for a lot of people. Let me know if it's something you would use. All right, number 10. So I've saved the most powerful tip for last. It is the Galaxy Tabs Dex Mode. You can access this by swiping down your quick settings at the top and toggling it on. And when you do this, this switches the Tabs UI into more of a classic desktop PC interface, not too dissimilar from Windows. And this mode makes the Galaxy Tab S10 FE a viable option for anyone who might need a small laptop for word processing and research purposes. Only it's gonna be a lot more compact, the battery life will probably be quite a bit better and the display can be used on its own. But of course, to make the most of the DeX mode, you'd probably wanna get the official keyboard cover and possibly a Bluetooth mouse. And at the time of this video, Samsung are giving away a keyboard with the purchase. So it might be worth checking out the link below this video. And if you've watched any of my other Galaxy tips and tricks videos before, you know I like to keep a few features to the end. And I do have a couple more iPad killer features to show you. So check this out. Security on iPads is very good. And one of the reasons why it's so good is the fact that Apple don't let you share the iPad with any of your family or friends. Why shouldn't I keep it? But they don't have this, at least not by default. If you bring down your quick settings, go to the pen icon and add the secure folder option. When you enable this, this creates a secure folder requiring a separate password or a pin number. And once created, you can place files and photos and whatever you want in this secure folder and keep them locked down. Just another layer of added security. And like I said before, this is a native Samsung Galaxy app. You don't have to download it and you don't have to pay any kind of subscriptions. Now here's another one. If you jump into the settings, go to security and privacy and then go to more security settings. At the top here, you will see secure Wi-Fi. Now this is important because tablets are great devices for traveling with, because you can watch movies on them, you can play games and they have great battery life. The problem is you might be likely to use a public hotspot when you're traveling. And these are prime places for hackers to steal your data. And that's where this secure Wi-Fi feature comes in. It helps to prevent this from happening. Again, this is native to Samsung Galaxy devices. It's essentially a free VPN that's baked into the software. However, there is a certain amount of data that you can use for free each month. So you do need to be mindful of that. And if you know you're gonna be traveling for a long time, then you might wanna subscribe temporarily or permanently if you wanted to. And listen, I could show you a hundred more cool things that you could do with the Samsung Galaxy Tab. And I could even show you how it integrates with the Microsoft Windows operating system. And I could even show you all of the hidden customization secrets, but I'm not gonna do that here because I've made those videos already and they're on screen right now. So if you do wanna learn more about what the Samsung Galaxy devices are capable of, check those out. And if you've got any value out of this video, a little thumbs up would be appreciated. If you save some money having watched this video, then feel free to send me some. And if you just subscribed, I will see you guys in the next one. Don't be late.